I think most people do not realize the power of moving water. When a large area of water is moving towards you, there is nothing that can stop it with the momentum and the force that it has. Hi, I'm Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa, and today we're looking back 50 years ago at the storm that sank the Edmund Fitzgerald. Well, the storm back in 1975 took a very, very classic storm path of what we've come to call the November Gales. What would this have been like if you were out there on the deck? At the time of the sinking, the sustained winds were around 50 to 55 miles an hour. But there are some thoughts that the gusts were about 75 miles an hour, maybe a little more. And that's why you've heard that uh, the gusts in that storm were hurricane force, which starts at 74 miles an hour. It just so happens that when these powerful storms pass through, they can make terrible waves with a southeast wind. And then like on the day of the Edmund Fitzgerald sinking, once the storm passed just off to the northeast of Lake Superior, the wind came around the backside of the storm system out of the northwest. That means you're blowing water all the way from the northwest corner of Lake Superior all the way to the southeast corner of Lake Superior. So those waves have time to pile up and get bigger and bigger and bigger. So as that, as that big wave area hits that shallower water, the waves build up even more. Or in this case with the road waves and what they call the three sisters waves, it's usually the second or the third wave that is the biggest. You know, in this case, there's thoughts that that rogue wave was possibly over 25 feet. Probably the scariest part would be the sound. It would be so loud in that kind of situation with the 50, 60, 75 mile an hour winds, 15, 20, 25 foot waves banging against the boat. It would be just incredibly scary. 